I feel education is the biggest thing that we can give people in a developing country today. We can educate them uh, on lots of aspects, how to improve their lifestyles, whether it be water, family planning and other areas. I think it's important that we do say something and try and make a change. Experience that was passed on to me back in Dublin in 1975 in the plumbing industry it was a vast experience from a very solid tradesmen. I believe it was time for me to pass that on to someone else and pass them on to a developing third world country. Well, to me it couldn't be passed on to a better place right now. I do have apprentices, I do pass on my experience to them, but going a step forward and bringing it to another continent um, makes me feel fulfilled that I'm doing the right thing. We have that budget, we're going to spend every cent on this water project that we've allocated for it. These women have to walk for, for a long distance looking for water. March 2008, uh, I took a vacation to Africa and I felt while being there that this was an area that I could return to carry out some work in a developing country. These people have no choice. So uh, hopefully we can eliminate all this by running this new pipeline down to the village so they don't have to come this far and fetch. And, uh, and the water will be polished and cleaned up and suitable for drinking as soon as we complete this stage of the project. Those gentlemen are just trying to clear the bush where the pipes are going to be laid. They're going to make some trenches. Then the pipes will be laid from the main water source. They're putting all their efforts to make sure that there's a way through for the pipes. Now they're out to make sure that clean water come next to their doors. On my return to Australia, I contacted workmates on a major construction project I was involved with and I, I've asked the workers would they be interested in making a donation. They agreed, I collected their money, most of the men gave one day's pay and then I returned to Kenya to carry out stage one of a water project. As you can see people are very busy, they are clearing the bush to make sure that they'll be having easy time making trenches Thereafter, pipes will be laid, put up the water from the main water source. That the work here is not so much easy. There are rocks, but they are ready to face anything on their way. It was slow at the start. Things picked up when the people realized uh, the benefits that were, they were going to you know, achieve from their efforts. And in the finish, on the final days, things was gone like clockwork. Yes, we will be returning and uh, continue our work and extending uh, the network of pipes to reach other areas um, in the short term. Eventually, we would, our plan would be to educate these people so they can install and maintain pipelines that we have put in place for them. These women were not left out either because they're the people who have been carrying a very big task of fetching for water. This woman is saying that she normally wakes up at around 4 a.m. in the morning uh, to go and fetch water. She had to travel a long distance. And now she'll be happy to find water around 
her home street. That's why she's working so hard, as you can see. Uh, this work is it's a bit difficult, but uh, I can't say it's difficult because we, we need water. You know, we are really suffering for water in this area. And we wake up very early in the morning at 4.30 and 4. We start looking for water. Where we are looking for water, for water is very far. And, and at times we go with the, this, uh, our children. My experience was uh, the people were overjoyed and they also felt that the West have kind of forgotten about them in these remote areas of uh, West Kenya. And they were overjoyed in the fact that they, they could see something happening this time and complete it. If you come at 3 a.m., that's when you can allow these children also time to go to school. And that's also the time we can get enough water to cook with, drink, and also wash their clothes. So we have to come very early so that they cannot be late in school and then be chased back home. Climbing this mountain is very, very difficult, but we have to because we have no otherwise. And there are even some old women, like my grandma, who comes for that water. They are trying to work here together, and they are using the spirit of Arambe, which means that they put their efforts together to make sure that, that the hard or difficult things, they work jointly to make sure that they uh, remove or clear what is in their way. Arambe spirit is a kind of spirit used in Kenya. That means putting uh, efforts together. I felt the people um, spend a lot of time every morning and every afternoon fetching water, walking up to three, four kilometers a day. And we can pipe this water from springs down to the villages. It will give them more time for more education. And I also would hope that any experience I bring, that they can pass that on to their own people in the future and set up the situation where they can train each other to harvest, collect, polish and clean this water and who knows after that irrigate grow vegetables and so it has a big spillover effect in showing them how to sustain and manage working tirelessly she's very busy and uh, this woman is 50 years old and she's able to do this kind of job because she needs to see clean water. This woman is saying that she's 45 years old. As you can see, she's really enjoying her work. She's saying that age doesn't matter. What matters is that they see clean water come into their area. And eventually this pipe will go all the way right down another probably two kilometers down that way. And we hit a main road and we'll cross under the main road and go over to the other side to another community. That will probably have to be another stage, which will be stage two. It's amazing what these blokes can do. There's nothing is a problem to them. No machinery, no electricity, no cranes, drills, they just all get stuck in the mullock until they get it achieved. Today is the sixth day of March 2009 and uh, we're just winding up our work here on the water point. And right now, as you can see, right inside there, it is down. This is simply because it, it is moving from the outlet pipe going down to the tank 
As you can see that tank down there. And uh, our work is, we are just concluding our work in this place. Our plumber, Mr. Liam, had to do some thorough physics to make sure that the water flows from the tank down there to the community. That's Corando A and Corando B. And now they can get water, clean drinking water from uh, strategic points where each and every person just moves with his own bucket to collect some water for drinking and for cooking. People can now smile because they've been suffering for so many years climbing up this mountain. They come on top of this hill, the old and the young, they come to collect water they used to come here on this place to collect water. In the future, we are planning to upgrade and put more tanks, more than one, because we are just able to put just one tank. So in the near future, we are planning to put 200,000 liters tanks, which will be able to supply the whole of the Corando area. And each and every person will be able to tap the water to their do uh, doorsteps. We are very grateful to our donors, the Rotary Club of Bandabog, the Houses Serving Corando, and the Corando Poverty Eradication Organization, who have worked tirelessly in conjunction with Marianne and uh, Mr. Liam to make sure that this dream for Corando comes true.